wait, 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 whoa, 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 hold on. Did we just skip an entire zone in the game? We're supposed to go to Ice Cap, and then we're supposed to go to Launch Base, and then we're supposed to go to Mushroom Hill, and then, then nobody, we're supposed to go to Flying Battery. What the fuck are you doing? Why did you do this to my Sonic game? And why does it look different? Calm your tits. Calm the calamity that is your memories. Ice your nips, and just take a seat. I'll explain. One of the original concepts for Sonic 3 was that Flying Battery was supposed to go in between Ice Cap Zone and Carnival Night Zone. Which you'll notice because they actually fixed a lot of the uh, original, uh, they fixed the placement of where things were supposed to go. Did you ever wonder why you shot off in, uh, at night and wound up at the top of a mountain during the day? Did that ever make sense to you? No? Well, this is why. Originally, Flying Battery was supposed to take place between these two zones, and this is further supported by the fact that when you were running out of the ship originally, at the very end of Flying Battery Zone, right before you go into Ice Cap Zone, where you use the snowboard in Ice Cap Zone, you're actually supposed to use the door from the front of this ship, which is another thing that the Sonic 3 Complete mod fixes, so we'll be seeing that too, which is pretty cool. Um, and one of the other changes, if you're... You might think that, okay, this is Flying Battery Zone, but something's still off. Well, you'd be right. The palette's different, too. See, the uh, one of the options that you have in this mod is you can change the palette of Flying Battery Zone to be more like the beta image for its original level select image. And that's what I happen to do. I don't know, I like the blue. It's a little bit more appealing to me. I don't know, blue's my favorite color, sue me. I know a few people who would, but... The Orange Brigade isn't welcome here. That's an inside joke, so. <laughs> if you have to be watching this, you know who you are. Ugh. The Orange Brigade. But, um, yeah, I actually like the palette swap. I like the fact that it's placed here. It's a fun level. I like Flying Battery Zone. And, why not? I mean, it, chronologically, it makes sense now. Honestly, Flying Battery Zone didn't really make much sense to me to begin with. Because where did Eggman get the giant ship if he's been... I guess I shouldn't be questioning where Eggman got the ability to build a giant ship when he's building a giant testicle in the sky, but... I mean, obviously, he's done both, so... I'm sure he'll figure it out. He's an evil genius. He's figured it out. He did it somehow, but it's just... As a con as a concept, it didn't really make much sense to me because Eggman never struck me as someone who had the resources and aptitude to build an empire. Even though, you know, that's his plan. I, when I think, like, empire, I think, like, imperial empire from, like, Star Wars. You know, massive ships everywhere controlling the galaxy. Eggman kind of strikes me as a mad scientist with a little bit too much time on his hands in a backyard that's not regulated by the government. But, I digress. I, the, the concept of the flying ship kind of felt a little bit cheap, especially since you're building up to the Death Egg. Why do we need the ship? Why couldn't it just be a base that didn't fly? We're gonna be in space anyway. Do, do we really need an air level? This isn't even much of an air level, if we're being honest. If I'm being honest, Flying, or flying battery, I, I keep in mind, I like the zone, but if I'm being honest, flying battery zone kind of just feels like, hey, we're acknowledging that Sonic 2 existed because we know that you like Sonic 2, right? You know, th th uh, what was the zone called? Uh, the Sky Chase? No. Was it? No? It, but if you play Sonic 2, you don't talk about the giant egg ship where you have to run along the ship and then you uh, chase Eggman up the Death Egg. It's like right after, I think it's right after Sky Chase, but yeah. Oh god. <laughs> and now we get to fight the dumbest robot Eggman's ever created. It's literally just a roboticizer with arms. With maces for hands. I'm not gonna lose to this. I don't know how you could, I don't know how you could lose to this. This is literally the easiest boss in the entire... Ah, God, I fucking hate this thing. It is the easiest boss in the entire game, and I can't believe that I just fucking lost to it. 
Ugh. God, I felt like such a scrub when that happened. I, I legitimately turned off my game con. Or not my game console. I turned off the emulator and sat down and walked away for like three hours. I did not want to play the game after I lost to his ass. It was so embarrassing. He's so easy to fight too. I don't know what causes him to start swinging both his hands at the same time, but normally if you just stand on his head, he only swings one arm and it's got a really easy wind-up phase to, you know, spot, so... It's just, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why he decided to swing at me, but whatever. I guess that's how that works, right? Just gonna take another sip there. Excuse me. And now we move on to the second part of Flying Battery Zone, Act 2. Oh, uh, what a good level. Actually, uh, I actually prefer this rendition of the song compared to the first one. Because the, if you notice, uh, the music changes for each zone as opposed to how it used to in the uh, Sonic 1 and 2, where it was just the same tune for the entire zone, the music actually does change a little bit per zone. And I prefer Flying Battery Zone Act 2 to Act 1. I don't know, there's something about the... Uh, the energy in it, I guess, just kind of catches me a little bit more. It's weird to explain, but trying to explain why I liked one song more than the other is honestly like trying to explain how to wipe your ass. I mean, yeah, you could explain how to do it, but generally every human is born with the instinct to clean shit off their ass. It, it just is. I don't know. It's just something I enjoy. And I mean, that's not to say that... Redo! I'm bad at this level or anything. I mean, I think I'm pretty good at flying battery zone. <laughs> Please, me being bad at a game level? You know something that I always kind of wondered? Why does Sonic not get affected by the magnets when he has the electric shield that... Clearly, it has magnetic properties because it can pull gold rings in from basically anywhere. Why does the super magnet that can lift the giant metal balls and bad nicks off the ground not affect Sonic at all? I, it didn't ever make sense to me. Honestly. Honestly, I don't know how you could... It just doesn't make sense. It has magnetic properties. You can't pick and choose how magnets fucking work, man. Magnets, how do they even fucking work? Supersonic, how does it even fucking work? I mean, Super Saiyan. I mean, Supersonic. I mean, Super Saiyan. I mean, beating a dead horse. I mean, repeated joke be for emphasis because funny. I mean, so how about that local sports team? Oh god, I love the ability to just deactivate Supersonic on one, on a will. It makes the utility of Supersonic much more useful as opposed to just pissing away all your rings the instant you activate it. And the fact that you activate it with a different button, which I don't know if I mentioned, I think I did, but yeah, you activate it with a different button. So no longer can you accidentally be spamming the jump button in midair and suddenly activate Supersonic. You now have access to your Insta Shield at all times, which isn't even an Insta Shield, it's like a instant attack, I think, and it's just called instant shield because of translation issues. But yeah, you now um, turn super by pressing a different button instead of jump button in the air, which makes it a lot more useful if you want to use it in tandem with like, say, I don't know, elemental shields or like deactivate it, because the ability to deactivate it's really cool too. It makes it a lot more useful utility wise, because now I'm not burning all my rings every time I pop the activation. And I swear I just repeated myself. You know, I'm gonna have a counter. If I... <laughs> God, that's a, that'd be a future, but... If I wind up having people watch my videos with any level of frequency, which, if you are, again, I can't thank you enough for even bothering to check this video out. It means the world to me. But if you stick around and happen to watch my videos with any level of frequency, we should probably get a counter on how many times I repeat myself, because I feel like I do it a lot. And welcome to the mini-boss of Flying Battery Zone. Kind of. It's mostly just a time killer, honestly. 
see, the gimmick is you can't get to Eggman, and there's nothing you can do to damage the laser that's shooting down at you. You just kind of have to walk around and avoid getting hit. And eventually, with enough persistence, luck, patience, and a little bit of know-how, and a little bit of stalling, because I apparently can't time things well, Eggman destroys his own creation, and now you have to chase him down. And hopefully not get crushed, but, oh, please, who am I kidding? We know I'm gonna get crushed, right? Nah. I don't get crushed. I am perfect. I am a god. I am a deity. Tails carry me. Tails don't carry me there. No, 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 shit! Redo! Redo, indeed. You know, I hope that actually is... <laughs> I hope that's as funny as it is to you guys as it is to me, because I... I won't do it a lot, but it's just... <laughs> Deja Vu was my favorite episode of the Fairly Odd Parents. And when I was looking for something to do with uh, all the deaths that I have, because I'm not a perfect gamer, I'm very terrible, I thought that that would be an interesting uh, little thing that I could have for, I don't know, I guess, my show. I haven't seen anyone else do it, but I don't know, maybe that's because it's not funny. But it's funny to me, so... Ha! Huh. Uh, I need friends. <laughs> and now we come to the easy boss, and the one that was completely overlooked when they decided to do Knuckles Story. You see, for Knuckles Story, you're not fighting Eggman. You're actually fighting a leftover Egg Robo. Yeah, that's actually a robot. And it's different from an Egg Pawn, let me tell you. But you're fighting a leftover Egg Robo that's still carrying out his directive. And for every uh, boss fight, they're all basically the same. But they all have Egg Robo sprites instead of Eggman. And uh, this one doesn't. But they fixed that in this mod, so we'll see that when we play through Knuckles. But I will see you guys next episode when we decide to tackle Ice Cap Zone. Stick around. I hope you enjoyed it. Sonic is not free-falling.